Welcome back, glad you're here. This week we're gonna go through the features of the T7i and how to do long exposures. I'm gonna make it really simple, super basic, entry level way to start taking long exposure shots today, right now, when this video, well, when this video is over. Don't, don't leave yet. So by the end of this video, you will be able to take your camera, walk outside, do your little, do your little thing, and take some bangers. I don't know if I can pull off bangers. Hey babe, can I pull off bangers? She, she can't hear me. Intro! Okay, so before we get into how to take these long exposure shots, I figure I would take a second, if you're new to the channel, kind of just explain what we're doing here and why this channel exists in the first place. My wife and I are going on our honeymoon in September to Hawaii, New Zealand, Australia, Tahiti, that whole part of the world. I want to make sure that the pictures that we take and that the moments that we capture on that trip are accurate and they're clear and they're good and they don't look orange and grainy and pixelated and just terrible. So in January of this year, 2019, I bought my very first camera, the Canon T7i. So from January on, all I did is like binge watch YouTube videos. Peter McKinnon, Hayden Peterson, like take your pick of who, but just one tutorial after another. In April of 2019, so four months later, I bought the camera that we're filming on now, the 6D Mark II, and I absolutely love it. So when I say this video is made by a beginner for other beginners, uh, like, it's June 1st. I've literally been doing photography for five months, five full months maybe. And this is all stuff that I've just learned by messing with the camera, playing with the camera, going out and shooting, just anything that I can get my hands on, and just watching a lot of YouTube. That's it. Didn't go to school for it. Don't plan to go to school for it. It's just YouTube. All of this information can be found online. All right, let's get into the modes real quick, and then we'll get into the long exposures. We've got portrait mode, landscape mode, small objects, and action. Those are your four guided modes. This is where this camera excels. You can set it to portrait and take your shot of your subject and the camera will do everything that it needs to to give you a great portrait. It's not gonna tell you or show you what it did. Uh, when you look on your viewfinder with a set in portrait mode, down at the bottom of the LCD, there is no indication of what the shutter speed is, what the aperture is. It, it just, it's not gonna tell you that. It's one of the reasons why I never ended up using these modes. Now the same thing when you flip down to the landscape, small objects, and action. It's not gonna tell you what the shutter speed or the aperture is on any of those modes, but it's gonna take good pictures in those different arenas. But now for long exposures. We're gonna wanna set it back on manual because we wanna have control over all of those settings. At the bottom of the LCD, you'll see that you've got three numbers from left to right. You've got your shutter speed, your aperture, there's a little graph, which is your exposure meter and your ISO on the right. For long exposures, we don't want our ISO set to auto. We want to set it to 100. That way it doesn't change. We're putting as little additional light into that image as possible, which on this camera is 100. When we're doing long exposures, there's going to be enough light coming in because that shutter is going to be open for a really long time. Set it to 100. Now when we move over for aperture, uh, basically starting out with aperture, I like to keep it somewhere in that eight to 11, F8 to F11 range to get that primary shot and then I'll adjust and go from there, depending on the conditions when I'm shooting. And then our shutter speed, if you push that wheel all the way to the left, uh, you're gonna have it, 30 seconds is the max that it's gonna give you as far as time. If you go to bulb, you're gonna be able to set it for much longer. So a lot of those astrophotography that you see of guys out at the Northern Lights or with the spiraling stars, a lot of those images, the shutter speed's set to like 45 minutes and it just stays open. I haven't done it yet, so I'm not gonna talk on it because I don't know. I usually will do a 30 second exposure, 20, 15, and then eight. Depending on what you're shooting, if it's traffic driving by, those different time frames plus the variable of what you're shooting, traffic is always different. You could be in the same spot taking the same photo, adjust a couple of settings and you're gonna get drastically different images. 
Um, for instance, here are some photos that I shot in Japan of traffic going by, practicing long exposures. I didn't change much. I might've changed the shutter speed a little bit here and there, but in general, the camera was down and I was just firing those photos as cars drove by, seeing what else I could get. And at one point, a car pulled out in front of me and I got a nice arc streak of their lights joining the regular traffic. So it ended up being a really cool shot. I was worried at first that they were gonna ruin it because now they were driving through the middle of it, but it, it worked, it came out great. As far as settings on your camera, it's that simple. External factors that aren't settings on the camera. You're gonna to wanna to remember that your camera needs to be down, whether on a tripod, on a table, on a wall, on a rock, I use the curb for the photos that I just showed you, just somewhere that the camera is set down and it is not gonna move. Any kind of movement at all is gonna give you blur in that photo and that nice, beautiful, buttery, long exposure that you're looking for is not gonna happen, it's gonna be blurry. That also means that you cannot press the shutter button. So no matter what surgeon hands or ninja skills you think you have, you are not gonna be able to press that shutter button and have it not blur your image, it's gonna happen. With this camera, thankfully, you don't need to buy anything else. There's no attachments you need to put on here, there's no Bluetooth enabling. The Bluetooth is enabled in the camera when you buy it, and it also has an app that's available for your smartphone that you can download. I have it set to my iPhone right now, and you can use that. It'll give you the remote viewfinder so you can see the image, and then within that app, you can just touch and scroll and change your shutter speed and change your aperture from your phone, and then you just hit the shutter button and let the camera do its thing. Don't come near it, don't look at it, don't think about it. Keep people out of your shot if you have to. It'll open that shutter, it'll take that long exposure and then boom, closes it, give it a second to process and the image will pop up on your phone. The other thing that you're gonna to need to consider is how much light that kind of shutter speed is gonna let in. As soon as you start cranking it and you start hitting that four seconds, five seconds, eight seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, you're gonna see the image on your viewfinder get more and more and more and more blown out until it's completely white. Not helpful. In last week's video, I was posting those pictures of the waterfall. The weather couldn't make up its mind. It would be overcast and then the sun would come out and it would be extremely bright and it was kind of hard to keep up. Thankfully, the filter that I have for my 24 to 70 is a variable filter. So I screw it onto the front of the lens and then as it gets lighter or darker, I can twist it and it'll let in more or less light depending on the situation. Now I'm not a scientist, but basically there's like this pane of glass, this pane of glass, they're made however, you know, photography magic elves make them. And when they put them together and you twist them, that combination, just like polarized sunglasses, are gonna just cut that light and that glare out and give you a clear image. There is a point when they cross too far and you're gonna start seeing that vignetting, that black edge start creeping in. I think it creates like an X on the frame uh, and it starts to kind of ruin your composition. And that's what happened with this photo. God, it was way too bright. I, the, the filter just couldn't keep up. I still think it's a cool picture, but not what I was going for. Uh, and it's something to consider. But having the ND filter made a huge difference on these photos versus the ones I took in Hijai Falls back in Japan when I had no ND filter. I've been using these and they feel really good. They're made really well as far as I can tell. Uh, they're KNF concept. Uh, it's a variable ND filter. It was about $50, I think. I ordered it online. You can get them on Amazon. Make sure you check the size. Uh, the size on your camera lens is gonna be on the inside. At the bottom, it'll tell you the diameter or whatever the hell that measurement is, I don't know. Um, but make sure that number matches the filter that you're getting. Otherwise, you'll get <laughs> small lens, big filter. One thing I've done in the past before I had an ND filter is I used a pair of sunglasses. Uh, you just get them in front of the lens and then with the, the camera shooting through, through your sunglasses, it's gonna diffuse some of the light and your entire trip out to the waterfall or whatever you're shooting in the middle of the day trying to get a long exposure won't be a complete wash. It's really that simple. So from one beginner to another, I hope this video helped you. I hope it helped cut through some of the just overwhelming stuff that you can find online when you're looking for just a simple answer. And I hope this was it. I'll put my Instagram here so you guys can tag me in your long exposure shots or any other shots that you're taking that you want me to see. I would love to see them. If you're new here, go ahead and subscribe. I don't usually do tutorials like this because again, like I said, I'm brand new at this. 
Uh, but Evan watched a video a couple weeks ago and he left a comment asking about the settings on his T7i and how to do long exposures. Evan, I hope you found this video helpful and I can't wait to see the shots that you take. For anyone else finding this video, tag me in your photos. Can't wait to see them and I will see you guys next week in our next video. All right, see ya. What do you guys think of the new space? This is, this is our office. It's, it's actually my wife's art studio. Um, I confiscated this corner. Run the outro.